Setting off for college is an exciting time, a lot of new opportunities, but also a lot of new introductions, and that can mean anxiety when meeting a bunch of new people. Absolutely. Everyone has anxiety, but it can be particularly true for LGBTQ plus students who may have to worry if their peers or faculty will accept them for who they are and offer them the resources to help them succeed. Jenny Beeman joins us now. They are the director at University of Massachusetts Amherst's Stonewall Center, a resource center for LGBTQ plus people. They are also working on a book called Campus Queer. Jenny Beeman joins us now. They are the director at University of Massachusetts Amherst Stonewall Center, a resource center for LGBTQ plus people. She's also, uh, they are also working on a book called Campus Queer. Jenny, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. So where do some colleges excel and others fall short when it comes to supporting LGBTQ plus students? Well, I would say that really no college excels. I think all colleges have work to do and can do things better. But I think the colleges that do do better are the ones that have someone like me, someone who's in a position to be the director of the office or center for LGBTQ plus students, because we're there to advocate on their behalf, to make sure supportive policies are in place and to educate the campus about the needs and experiences of LGBTQ plus students. One of the hats I wear is I work with Campus Pride, a national LGBTQ plus youth advocacy group. And we have what's called the Campus Pride Index, which rates colleges on their LGBTQ plus inclusiveness. And pretty much all of the colleges that rank the highest have an LGBT center that's professionally staffed. So having someone who's there to be for students is just so critical. Uh, Jenny, thank you for being here. You're, you're really terrific uh, on this subject, and not only because you run the Stonewall uh, Center there at UMass Amherst, but because you're working on this book, uh, co-authoring it, uh, called Campus Queer, about the broader effort to make these campuses more inclusive. Do you have any sense currently of how many college campuses, what portion of them have resource centers like the one you're in charge of? Uh, and then because people are so practically minded these days, when you don't have a center like that, what impact does it have on the academic performance, the learning environment for members of the LGBTQ community? Yeah, I'm on, I'm on vacation now, and so my internet is not, is not the greatest, oh. but I, I think I got most oh, of that. Sorry. There are about two about 200 centers that have a per, that are professionally staffed uh, in the country. So when you consider there are about 4,000 colleges and universities, a, a very, very small number. And we know that where students don't have the support, don't have the resources, don't feel that they have a sense of belonging, they do much poorer. They don't stay at institutions. They don't do well academically. They suffer emotionally and psychologically, which makes a lot of sense, right? If you don't feel that you belong at an institution, you don't feel that the climate there is supportive of you, why would you want to stay? Right. Or why would you put time and energy into, into studies when you don't feel like people care about you? All of that makes a lot of sense. So what advice then would you have for students who perhaps are in one of those schools and they say, hey, you know, I'd, I'd like to try and fix this. I want to take matters into my own hands. Can, can they petition the administration perhaps to start a center like the one that you run? Or how could they create a more open environment at the school they already attend? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say two things. One is to organize, meet with the administration and demand that things improve, that they create an LGBTQ plus center, have policies in place to support LGBTQ plus students. And if they don't protest, uh, institutions hate bad publicity. So they'll do anything oftentimes to avoid that. So that's something that students can use. And also I would say, find allies who are faculty and staff who can be supportive, who can advocate for students in places where students may not be able to have access. Obviously, students don't have this kind of power that uh, some administration folks do, some faculty do. And also, a lot of times administrations try to wait out students until they graduate. 
So having faculty and staff in, involved can make sure that, that change happens because change often takes time and students are only there oftentimes for a few years. And so having uh, faculty and staff support is really important, I think. Important indeed. Jenny Beeman, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your insight. Enjoy your vacation. You're yeah. very welcome. <laughs> Happy Pride Month. Mm -hmm. Thank you.